Good afternoon, friends. I hope this has been a good week for you, or at least that you have been finding the resources that you need to face whatever has come your way recently. These are unsettled and unsettling times, and they bring home so clearly to us the fact that we need to stay securely rooted in God's love for us and rooted in our commitment to and our love for our faith community. There are so many things these days that can feel like they're rocking our boats. The pandemic itself keeps winding on and now brings conflicting messages and feelings. On the one hand, we celebrate the fact that the rate of infection in our area has been steadily reduced and that we have been granted more freedom for coming and going than we have had since mid-March. On the other hand, we hear that the worst is likely yet to come and that we are by no means out of the woods yet. It certainly brings to the forefront the question of whether and when and how we might be able to gather again in person. As you know, different congregations are answering those questions in different ways, and we wanted to let you know that our reopening task force will be meeting again this Wednesday evening to talk further about the specifics of what that will look like for our congregation. And in the meantime, following discernment from the task force, the eighth graders and sponsors were able to celebrate a lovely graduation celebration picnic on that spread out on the lawn here at the Salford building. It wasn't the same as sitting around a tight uh, restaurant table, but we were still able to celebrate. And that format is one thing that we can point to that is possible and even fun, even as we continue to be very careful about COVID safety. Our awareness of the pain and injustices around race in our country also continue to be very present. And the shooting death of Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta just last Friday night is one more tragic reminder of how difficult and often dangerous it is to be a person of black or brown skin in our country. It seems especially appropriate on this day, today, which is Juneteenth to acknowledge this widespread stirring in our nation and also in our congregation of a desire to stand up and reach out towards something better and to do what needs to be done to end patterns of injustice and oppression that have been playing out for far too long. And with that, for persons like myself to acknowledge the sorrow and shame I feel at having had so little awareness of what Juneteenth even is. I realized that for years I was basically oblivious to this oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in our country. I didn't need to pay attention to it. It didn't need to matter in my life. And so it didn't. And now I feel a deep need to say, I am sorry. And to find ways to put that feeling into action. So there are these two pandemics, the pandemic of coronavirus and the pandemic of racism surrounding us. And another part of our context this week is that our church board is looking for a reading on what our various convictions are in the congregation about how we do or don't include LGBTQ plus individuals in our congregational life. And this is another conversation which may feel unsettling for some. It can all feel like too much. On every one of these counts that we've named, we are reminded again that we are living in a time and place where polarization and sharp difference are present and affect so many aspects of our lives. 
And we haven't even mentioned the fact that we are in an election year. We need to send our tap roots down deep to remember that we are, each of us and all of us together, anchored in God's love and there drawing nourishment and stability from God's spirit. We need to send our roots down deep to the God who speaks to us, who speaks to us now and who spoke to us most fully and clearly in Jesus. Jesus who said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. We remember when Jesus said, this is my commandment that you love one another. This is how everyone will know you are my disciples when you love each other. When he said, when you care for the least of these, you care for me. Our charge from the God who speaks is not an easy one. We are called to love and listen, to forgive and to remain in relationship when it would be so much easier to walk away. We are called to speak up and step out when it would be so much easier to remain the quiet in the land. We need to send our roots down deep opening ourselves as fully as we can to all that God is so ready to pour into our hearts and souls to give us courage, strength, patience, and love. When Jesus went through his time of testing in the wilderness and had spoken his final words to the tempter, Matthew's gospel says, and angels came and attended him. So today, we want to leave you with this Blessing of Angels by John O'Donohue. We'll be reading excerpts. May the angels in their beauty bless you. May they turn toward you streams of blessing. May the angel of awakening stir your heart to come alive to the eternal within you to all the invitations that quietly surround you. May the angel of healing turn your wounds into sources of refreshment. May the angel of compassion open your eyes to the unseen suffering around you. May the angel of justice disturb you to take the side of the poor and the wronged. May the angel of encouragement confirm you in worth and self-respect that you may live with the dignity that presides in your soul. May the angel of death arrive only when your life is complete and you have brought every given gift to the threshold where its infinity can shine. May all the angels be your sheltering, and joyful guardians. You are in our hearts and in our prayers, dear friends. Be well. <laughs>